The lineups are set for round two of the Democratic presidential debates, and the dynamics are fascinating, from a Biden-Harris rematch to a Sanders-Warren pairing that literally puts at center stage the debate over whether the party is drifting too far to the left. Let's take a look at the lineups for next week. This is night one. Again, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, the leading progressive candidates in the race. Medicare for all, free college tuition, center stage. Uh, whether it's Senator Klobuchar or Mayor Buttigieg or come over here, Governor Hickenlooper, Congressman Delaney, Governor Bullock, they all make the case if you agree with them, the party will drift too far to the left and lose a national election. This will be an interesting dynamic, also interesting to see. Do they spar with each other? They say they're friends, but they're rivals right now. She has emerged as a significant threat to Bernie Sanders. Night two, the highlight here, the rematch, of course. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris went at it quite sharply over busing. Other race-related issues in the first debate, she gained from that. We'll watch for a rematch there. Cory Booker has given some indication he wants in on that, saying the vice president has been insensitive to that issue. He was the front runner. He's come down in the poll since the first debate. He's a leading candidate now, the front runner no more, but still the former vice president expects he will be a frequent target. I'll be prepared on all the issues that are asked of me. Uh, now, I guess you're implying, and you're probably right, that there's others who are going to be ready to, you know, uh, fire some cannonballs at me here, and uh, we'll see. Do you want to be the aggressor this time? No. I know what I'm for. I'm going to talk about what I'm for. I'm going to talk about why I think I'm the best qualified person. As we start the conversation, I just want to put up this polling graphic, and I want you just to start on the left of the screen with the four leading candidates here. Uh, Warren and Harris, the two women on this graphic, are at the bottom. Then come over over the last seven months to July and look at how much they have improved. In the most recent poll, both Senator Harris and Senator Warren passing Bernie Sanders, former Vice President Biden, coming down. So you've got a close race at the top of the pack here, but the two women senators right now, they are the ascendant candidates in this race heading into round two. That's right. And, and these debates are going to be really interesting to see, you know, I think the the Biden uh, the the what happened with Senator Harris and Vice President Biden at the last debate really got under his skin, and he is probably relishing the opportunity uh, to be able to re-engage with her. We saw her in particular really surge after that debate, really surge after being able to create a couple of high impact moments uh, because so many Democratic voters still don't feel like they know a lot of these candidates. They're interested. They just don't really know them. And I think as this sort of top tier starts to break out, uh, it makes it easier for people to be able to get to know the candidates, uh, go deep on them, start to make some decisions. Because part of the reason that this field has been so in flux isn't any particular thing that's been happening. It's just voters sort of wandering around kicking the tire. Right, and, and trying to get to know some of the newer faces. Biden, Sanders, much more familiar faces trying to get to know. To reinforce your point there, NBC Wall Street Journal poll asked after the first round of debates, which candidates most impressed? 47% of Democrats said Harris. 32% said Warren. Your issue here is that if you are Joe Biden, 15% said they were impressed by Joe Biden. Your calling card is, I'm the guy you want next to Donald Trump. You can't place fourth among the Democrats as impressive in the debates and make the case you're the strongest guy to go against Donald Trump. Yeah, no question. He's going to have to sharpen his performance from last time. I mean, his voters, Democratic voters, undoubtedly had were shaken by his performance last time. This, but since he is a well-known commodity, if he turns around and does a good job, in their view, this time a steady performance, able to fend off attacks, prepared as he says he's going to be, but also having being able to punch back effectively, that could stabilize his campaign and prevent any real significant erosion in his support. But if he delivers that unsteady performance and when he gets attacked, which he will, and gets into a long laundry list of his accomplishments and meandering response, that's going to unnerve a number of Democrats when they look at, is he really the best person to take on Trump? The pressure on him to stop that slide is enormous. What about night one? Sanders and Warren in the middle, and again, a number of the moderates on stage. So I suspect they will be allies to a degree saying we're right. Uh, the country's ready for Medicare for all. The country's ready for the Green New Deal. The country's ready for free college, which that's an untested proposition in a national election. But that is their position. But Warren has emerged as a giant threat to Sanders, who thinks he's the movement leader. Will there be fireworks there? They say they're friends, but he was mad she didn't endorse him in 2016. I just want to show you. This is the CNN University of New Hampshire poll just this past week. Look at this here. They 
40 percent of the vote in New Hampshire between these two candidates. Both are the leading contenders when people say second choice. Maybe this debate won't be this fight, but for this race to be settled, this Warren Sanders fight has to happen eventually, right? It, it does. And I, I think part of what's interesting, though, to me is as similar as they are ideologically, they don't always, I know that poll showed that they seem to be the uh, second choice of each other, but they don't always seem to pull from the same voters right. so far. I know it's early. Um, so what's interesting to me is ideologically, you're right, they are, uh, they are very similar. But Elizabeth Warren seems to pull more from a um, sort of a more establishment wing of the, the Democratic Party at this point, which is really interesting because I don't know that ideologically that's where everyone thinks her opinions seem to align. She seems to be winning over more and more even of the sort of finance sector crowd you've been hearing, which given her policies is really, really interesting. And, um, and I, I wonder if that's a sort of quirk of West being just early on in the election cycle. But as much as they will be battling it out with each other, it will be interesting to see whether or not Elizabeth Warren is sort of even pushed further to the left on issues than she's comfortable doing. That'd be fun. You know, uh, I think this is a high stakes debate for Sanders because he didn't make many waves in, in the last debate. And from certainly from the perspective of the Trump campaign, while Joe Biden may have seemed like the biggest loser, they, they thought Bernie Sanders lost a lot of ground simply because he didn't make many headlines. And now going head to head with uh, Elizabeth Warren, I think he needs to generate some headlines, um, pulse, you know, um, aggress in some sort of way. Or um, if he comes out of two debates with, uh, with not too many headlines, uh, that's, not, that's not great for him. I, I just want to show you the Sunday New York Times Magazine, Pete Buttigieg on the cover. I would also say there's a lot of pressure on Mayor Pete in mm -hmm. the sense that he was the surprise early candidate in the race. He shot up in the polls. He's dropped down a little bit and plateaued now, raised a lot of money. He has the power and he's already qualified for the next round of debates. But his plateau, I think it'd be interesting to see. I'm really looking forward to see what does he view as his play in debates round two.